morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Richard Evans, and I'm in outbound product management within the Oracle database security product management team. Today, we're going to have Hakeem talk about advanced data masking using our Oracle data masking and subsetting pack. Just Hi, everyone. Just a reminder that this call is being recorded and will be available on the Ask Tom page when we uh, post it later this week. Ask Tom is a direct channel into Oracle Database Security Product Management. It's a free and open forum for you to ask questions that you may not be able to get answered elsewhere. Each session, we're going to talk about product announcements, some technical content, and we're going to have a question and answer that is not limited just to the technical topic. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We will try to answer them as we go through the presentation. Uh, we will answer questions at the end. And if we can't answer those questions, we can get back to you afterwards. So we hold this meeting every second Thursday of each month. So there are two sessions. These sessions are identical, so we try to cover the world so anyone who wants to join can join. So today, we don't really, we have one product announcement. That product announcement is our Oracle Database 19C is now available for Windows and Z Linux. So you can see we have Windows covered, Linux, Solaris, AIX, and HP Unix. I want to point out that 19C is not a new release. It is the long-term support release for Oracle Database 12C Release 2. So when you think about 19C and upgrading, think of this patch set 12.2.0.3. Like we had in previous releases, where 10.2.0.5 was the terminal release for 10C Release 2, and 11 had 11.204, this is the terminal release of 12.2 release C. So don't be afraid to upgrade, please. Some of the highlights there that we've added, the auto renaming you might find useful, uh, support for additional algorithms for offline table space encryption. In 18C, we started to introduce schema only accounts. In 19C, we start to remove passwords for some of those default accounts. And then we also introduced the ability to do unified auditing only. And we talked about that a, a, few, a couple months ago in a session, but that way you can just audit what is executed, not all of the PL SQL that is in, uh, not all the statements that are in your PL SQL. Okay. Another thing we want to point out is that the database features app on the website. So you can look to see what features are available in which editions of the database. This is a handy kind of little calculator here so you can identify Okay, is this in 12.1, 12.2, or do I need to get to 19C to get this feature? You could also just narrow this down to security features too. So if you want to narrow down to a focus area, you can do that. You can choose the version, and then you can see the features that go along with that. So if you want to see what's new in encryption, database vault, uh, redaction, auditing, active directory, things like that. Another thing you'll notice is that Oracle has updated the docs.oracle.com website. So it's got a nice clean layout and you cover all the featured products here. But one thing we noticed yesterday is, well, wait, we're used to just finding the database and clicking database documentation. So you're going to click the menu, the little hamburger menu in the top left corner, and then you're going to find your Oracle database. And that'll take you back to your familiar documentation. So that's where you can find that feature app uh, kind of calculator matrix tool and all the Oracle documentation for the database. Okay, one last announcement here. Oracle Open World 2019 will be held September 16th through 19th at the Moscone Center. You can save money if you register by July 6th. Some of the security sessions that we will be presenting, my coworkers and I, include uh, cloud security, keeping your data safe in the cl cloud, uh, encryption, security features you may not be using. These top 10 security features is a great presentation kind of a changing role of database administrators when it comes to security. And then uh, our uh, senior VP, Vipin, will be presenting the database security in 2019, kind of the innovation rates accelerate. So please try to join us at Open World if you can. 
Now we're going to get started with our technical session. So we have Hakeem on the phone. And Hakeem, I'm going to pass control over to you. Okay. So hi, everybody. We will talk about uh, data masking and society advanced uh, feature for today. So uh, first of all, we, we, had, uh, we made a, a, a previous uh, session two months ago for the basics. Uh, we have uh, demonstrated uh, static and dynamic masking. So I mean data masking and subsetting and also data reduction. So please, uh, for the basics, uh, feel free to refer uh, to this uh, former session. For today, uh, we will talk about um, data masking advanced format. So copying production data for non-production purpose uh, proliferate sensitive data expands the security and compliance boundary, and increases the likelihood of data breaches. If left unprotected, the data might be accessed by contractor or offshore workers and possibly moved across location. Therefore, even in non-production environments, you need to protect your sensitive data and stay compliant with data privacy regulation, such as PCI DSS, and uh, uh, GDPR, for example. The recommended solution is to mask your sensitive data before using it in non-production environments. This way, you minimize the sensitive data you have and thus uh, reduce the risk and compliance boundary. So data masking is the process of permanent, permanently replacing the sensitive data with fictitious yet realistic looking data. It helps you generate fully functional data with similar characteristics as the original data to replace sensitive or confidential information. It limits sensitive data proliferation by anonymizing sensitive data while enabling you to use production-like data. It ensures that malicious actors cannot, cannot benefit from the fictitious, fictitious data, even if they gain access to it. We have two different modes to deploy this option. First of all, we have in database. So it's very useful because you have a minimal impact on your source environment. In general, this is the production. Uh, because you have a, a, an entry, you have a, a database between your source and your target. So first of all, you have to push your data in the staging. You transform inside the staging, and after that, you push, you push the result to your target. The second one is in export. Uh, this is uh, uh, used by uh, uh, data pump uh, feature. You generate an export dump file directly from the source. Your dump file is uh, automatically transformed, is masked and subset. And after that, you can import this dump file to your target. It's very useful because uh, it's easy, it's very fast, but take care, it's for Oracle only. Compared to the in-database mode, uh, this mode could be used uh, in a heterogeneous online. Just uh, as, a, uh, as a reminder, I just want to be sure that everyone is uh, clear with the terminology. So source, is a database from which the data originates. In general, this is a production, and in a multiple, uh, in a multi-source environment, you have to consider all your database. So I mean, if you are in data guard environment, for example, you have to consider both primary and standby server. For the staging, the staging is a database on which masking and subsetting operation are performed. And uh, of course, the target, this is a database where the data is copied uh, from staging DB without natively performing operation. In a complex environment, uh, it's uh, better, it's recommended to use in export masking uh, methodology. So, for example, in Oracle Golden Gate environment, you have this kind of configuration, a source and your target. And between them, you have Oracle Golden Gate replication. First of all, you have to define your mask and subset script 
on the target, you stop the replication, you generate and execute the mask and subset script on your target. So you mean, I mean, you generate an export dump file, you restart your replication, and now you can import easily your dump file directly to your test and dev environment. Another, another method uh, uh, with uh, the data guard environment is to use a physical standby and snapshot standby. So in this case, you convert your physical to snapshot standby, you define and ma uh, your mask and subset uh, directly on the snapshot standby, you generate and execute your mask subset script so, I mean, you, you create an export dump file. After that, you can convert snapshot to physical standby, and you can apply easily your uh, dump file on your test and dev environment. Finally, you can also use the scene provisioning with the snap clone database. Here you, are, uh, you have the database production, and you have your test master. First of all, you have to export, so you generate uh, an export dump file from your production. And now you can import that on your test master and you can generate a thin provisioning for all the functional copy that you want to use. Keep in mind that uh, every, um, every time you want to uh, make a, um, a data masking project, you have to respect exactly the same impl implementation methodology. So you have four steps. The first one is to create your data model. We call that an ADM, application data model. Second one, you have to select the format and criteria. This is the moment where you choose uh, the column that you want to mask and uh, how do you want to mask it then. Uh, third, third step, you preview your masking algorithm. You preview also your subset reduction result. And if you are okay, if it's all right for you, you can validate it and generate your script and go to the uh, fourth step. So this is the steps um, for the execution of the transformation. It means you have, uh, you have generated um, a PL SQL script and you launch it on your environment. If you have any, any problem during this phase, you can go back to the first, second or third part, uh, second step, sorry, uh, to fix and to, uh, uh, to change all the things uh, that you want to change. We have a lot of combination possible with mas masking, with data masking. Uh, in, on the screen, you can see a few of them. For example, condition, shuffle, deterministic. Uh, you can also preserve in the format and you can also change the information inside a blob, for example but you have many, many more combinations possible. You have two possibilities to, uh, uh, to use the masking format. You can use a common masking format, so it means um, we have implemented inside, inside the tool, inside the engine, um, billions and billions fake data. So here you can use them. On the screen you can see, for example, the credit card number or the social insurance, social security number. You can also uh, make your own masking format. You can custom them. You can use a different algorithm on the, on the right part here. And of that, you can combine them if you want, if you want to be more complex or not. You can also use templates for specific version of the business suite or, and the fusion application. We recommend you to, uh, of course, to, to discover the sensitive data before to, uh, to, to work on them. And to do that, you have two, two possibilities. First one, you can, do, you can do it manually, and you can also do it automatically. And it's very useful because you have sensitive column type already implemented inside the engine. But if you want to add another one, you can do it easily. You have also SQL expression. 
we will see uh, few, uh, we will see the four um, most important uh, advanced options for data masking and, and subsetting. A SQL expression is very useful because you can use the the SQL SQL expression to mask a column data. Data masking uses uh, the specified SQL expression to generate values which are used used to replace the original data. It can also contain substitutions column, column from uh, columns from the same table as the column to be masked. You should specify the substitution columns within person symbol. You can also use aura hash function in order to have a de deterministic value. Aura hash takes three arguments: one, the expression; two, number of hash buckets; and three, seed. And it can be any any number which uh, decides uh, the the consistency. But uh, take care, the uniqueness is not guaranteed, but depends on the input, on the input and the number of hash buckets used. You can also use the conditional masking. Conditional transformation provides an ability to arrange masking format according to different conditions. For example, Consider masking a column containing unique identifiers. Identifiers that belong to uh, IT prod can be masked, masked uh, using specific value format, and that belong to ST clerk can be masked using another one. You have also compound masking, also known as grouping option enables you to mask a related uh, column together as a group, ensuring that the masked data across the related um, columns retain the same relationship. The columns being masked as a group must belong to the same table. It's really important to have in the same table. You can use deterministic substitution, random substitution, shuffle, or user-defined function for compound mas masking. Uh, one of the key requirements while masking data in, a, in large databases or multi-database environment is to consistently mask some columns. I mean, for a given input, the output should always be the same. At the same time, the masked, uh, the masked uh, output should not be predictable. Predictable. Deterministic masking generates consistent output for a given input across databases and data masking jobs. Masking multiple uh, times across different databases yields the same masked value. This characteristic is valid across multiple databases or multiple runs, run, assuming, assuming that the same input value are used in the two runs. So deterministic masking is helpful in maintaining data integrity across multiple uh, applications or in the preserve system integrity. But Take care, uh, um, this is not for a uh, substitute. The method uh, use a hash-based algorithm in the back end. So the mapping, uh, the mappings are consistent. Uh, the uniqueness of the masked value is not guaranteed, but depends on the number of columns um, being used in the substitution table. I mean, if the original table contains uh, 5,000 uh, unique uh, values, then for the masked uh, output to be unique and deterministic, the substitution column should also contain uh, 5,000 unique values, without which, which only consistency is maintained, but not uniqueness. 
Now I want to show you by a, a demo uh, all of these uh, masking formats. So I have I have two databases. The first one is PDB1, and the second one is PDB2. Or this, both databases have exactly exactly the same uh, information in their in their database. So here. If I launch the query of my sensitive data that I want to mask, I get exactly the same. So I get user ID, last name, first name, email, location, phone mobile, phone fix, phone fax, and start date. And I want to mask all this sensitive data. To do that, I will generate a script to, um, to mask this information. I have uh, already generated uh, an export XML file, so I will import that with a simple script here on PDB1. So I will load this ADN. So I have an ADN here, O1DMS ADN demo prod, and I load that for PDB1, but I will associate as well a second database, PDB2. Here, if I, if I go back to my uh, console, Enterprise Manager here, and I click on Quality Management Application Data Modeling, I can see here my ADM. So if you need more information on how to uh, configure an ADM, please refer to the, uh, to the former session uh, two months ago on the basics of uh, data masking. Here, we can edit it on my, with my right account. I just love on that. I can see the schema, all the tables. I can see also the relationship between my tables and I can see all the sensitive columns that I want to mask. So I will work on this sensitive column. If I click on actions and associated databases, I can see the different database that I want to associate. So here in my example, I associate only PDB2. Of course, you need to have exactly the same schema if you want to mask uh, uh, with the same script. Now, if I go to the data masking definition, I have nothing for the moment. And I will resume my process because I want to import my XML uh, definition. So here, my, X, my uh, definition called O1 DMS masking demo uh, prod uh, demo prod. This is my uh, this is for my ADN. And now I will uh, work on this column, and I want to show you different algorithms. So for this column, I will create a group. So I will make a substitute for the compound masking. I will generate a Nora Ash here. Ash, sorry, here for FunFix. I will use the encryption regex for FunFax and substitute for name. But all of that are, all of them are deterministic algorithm. But just to uh, be more, um, uh, that because I want you understand correctly, uh, I will use non-deterministic algorithm, random date for start date, and conditional masking for card number. So in my example, if I go back to uh, my Enterprise Manager console and I refresh it, now I can see my definition. I can edit it with my right account. And I can see all the different uh, uh, sensitive columns that I want to use. Here, 
you can see the number one. It means all these columns are in the same group, the group one. To create a group, uh, because it's, uh, I want to uh, keep this definition uh, properly, I will do I will do that in another one. I create a new definition for my ADM here, this one. Okay. I choose PDB1, and now I will use the sensitive column. Here I can search all the columns, and I will check, I will select only columns that I want to use. Keep in mind, it's very important, all the columns of a group has to be in the same, in the same table. Here, demo HR employees. And if I do that, I click on mask selected column as a group here. And when I click add, I have a new group, as you can see, the group 10. And if I click on the format, I can see my column. I can preserve, uh, preserve the original data if I don't want to uh, mask them. So it's not recommended if you want to uh, mask them, of course. And you have several, uh, several algorithms, shuffle, substitute, table column, and user defined function. For substitute, this is a deterministic way. And here, you, you need to, uh, you have to, uh, to select a table where all the, the fake data will be, will be taken, will be, uh, will be taken. So in this case, uh, for my example, I will uh, I will take the information in a fake in a fake uh, table. Here, this is for example. Here, this is the table mask data from DMS admin owner. So, in my uh, example, I can show you the information. I got a lot of information in this table with surname, given name, email address, city, and telephone number. So if I go back here, so I will cancel it because I don't need any more. And I go back to my original definition. I edit it. And I will show you now how to configure this group. So in my case, I will use mask data information, uh, mask data table, and I will match each column to the column that I want to use. So in my case, Last name will be uh, will be matched on with surname, location with city, phone mobile with a telephone number, first name, given name, email, email address. It means if I if I uh, modify last name, all the information on the same line will be used. So in my case here, if uh, if my uh, if my new uh, last name will be begging this one this line two i will have the given name here this email address this city and this phone number this is how a group works so it's very it's very useful because like that you can uh, you can keep the consistency of your application now i will show you the different uh, the other algorithm so in my example I will have card number here. I will use the conditional masking. Here, as you can see, I have several conditions. Here, Visa, MasterCard, MX, for example, and default condition. You have different algorithms. So for Visa, you can use a package. And with the package, you can call a, a function called VC. For MasterCard, this is MC, and for MX, this is AC. If you want, if you want to add a new condition, you click Add Condition here. You can copy past this information here, and you can change the value. So I will use Discover here. Don't forget to use Simple Cut here, and you can import format from your uh, from the library within the engine so as you can see you have different fake billion fake data i will use discover card for this one here and i will import the algorithm 
So the algorithm is here, and as you can see, you have the new function disk for discover. If I click on this symbol, I will see um, uh, a new a new value. Uh, if you apply this um, this algorithm on that, so you see the first digit is six, and for Visa the first digit is four, and for Mastercard the first digit is five, and for MX this is three. Like that, you can have different conditions, and you can you can mask your data differently uh, depending on the uh, uh, depending on your identifier. So I validate it. Second one, you, we can use the substitute. So substitute is a deterministic uh, um, algorithm. Here I will use the uh, the the information username from the colon username of the mask data colon. So if I see what there is inside this, uh, uh, this table here, I will see different fake name, and I can use that uh, uh, for the, the masking process. Here, I will check it, and I can see if there is a few uh, new, new, new data on this table. So it's quite long, I will cancel it. Okay, alert, cancel. I have another one for phone number, phone fix. I will use on that the SQL expression, the aura hash function. So aura hash function is always in the same, uh, in the same syntax. So here I can show you, this is exactly this syntax. So if I launch it, I have the, the, the original data here. And if I apply this hash function, I have this one. So what is very important? You have three arguments. The first one, this is the expression. So I will transform one fix. The second one is the format that you want to respect. So here, three digits, here, four digits. And the third one is the, the, the seed. So in my case, I, I don't use any seed, so it means I will use the, uh, the default value within the engine. So that's why when I launch each time, each time the same syntax, uh, the same query, I get always the same value. If I put a seed here, one, two, three, four, for example, here, and I launch it again, I have a different value, 493. If I change the seed to three four, so this value will change will be changed four two one. So in my case, I will not use any seed. I will use the uh, default value. So in my case, I would have a four three one, for example. You can see here, I didn't put any seed on my script. Yeah. So. I test it just to be sure it works, and now I click OK. You have also also a start date because uh, all of that is a, a deterministic mode, and I want to show you uh, for a non-deterministic mode. So I use a, a simple random date between uh, this date and this date. So I have this format. It's very important to show you between PDB1 and PDB2. Uh, when it's deterministic and when it's not deterministic. I have also uh, uh, also fun facts. And for fun facts, I will use the, the key-based reversible uh, format masking. And this is encrypt by regular expression. So I want to transform my, uh, my original data with this expression. So I will have this format. So it will be fun facts. I validate it. I show you again the original data here. So until, until fun facts, everything is deterministic here. Only start date is not deterministic. So it means if I use uh, uh, the, if I run um, two times, three times, four times my script, 
I will have always the same information, even on the PDB2. But it will not be the case with Stardate, because Stardate is not deterministic. And I will do that also on this table, the table order. I will change name and I will change card number with a condition with a conditional algorithm. So how to proceed? I will validate that, but just before, I want to add uh, an advanced option. I can add a pre-mask script or a post-mask script. So it means uh, during the masking process, you can launch PMSQL uh, script before or after the transformation. In my case, I will uh, use a simple query, query to update the email, uh, the email address to, uh, I will add, uh, yes, I will add a, a specific string at the end, string at the end of the email. Like that, you can see in one way, in one way how it works and how it, how it easy, uh, it's easy to, uh, to do that. So I validate it. And now I will generate the script. So to generate, I click generate script. I, 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 will, I will choose the deployment mode. So in my case, I will use in export, uh, in database, sorry, but you can use also in export, of course. I will connect with my right account and I submit it, submit it. I can follow the process here. So I refresh it. I refresh it. It's, it's quite uh, fast, usually. Okay. Succeeded. Okay. So now if I refresh, I can see the script is gener generated. And now I will schedule the job. So here, of course, I will choose PDB1, still in database. And don't forget to select uh, this, this case uh, because the engine uh, want to be sure that uh, you don't make any mistakes. Here for the encryption, for the encryption uh, masking format, I need a seal. So in my case, I will use one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I will use a specific directory to store my script here. So I copy past here. So if I show you on my server here, if there is something for the moment, there is nothing. And I put the right credential and I submit it. So now the, uh, I will schedule the job and I can follow the execution. The transformation is in progress. So on PDB1. I refresh it, I refresh it, okay, successful. So now, if I refresh, I can see the masking job is in success. If I go back to my, my server now, I can see the script. So I, uh, I will be able to use, to use it uh, in the future if I want. And I want to see, of course, the result. So don't uh, remember, this is the former value, so PDB2. And in PDB1, I show you the new values here. And as you can see, for, for example, user ID uh, 104, this is Geng Genji, and it was Peterson. So everything is uh, with a new value. And, here, last name, first name, email, location, phone, mobile. Uh, we have a group. So for this group, for example, uh, with location OK2 and first name Estela, I, I have exactly the same, the, same, the, the same value of the mask data. You remember here, if I do that with Genji, 
Yeah. I launch it. And I go back to gaming G Estela, Estela here, Estela with Oki2 here. So this is this line. And I have to, uh, usually the phone number is 0061508. So if I go back to my new value, I see Oki2 0061508. So it's very easy to, to use a group. And uh, if you remember, uh, my post script had a specific string, string at the end of the email. And as you can see, I have an update of my email. For the phone fix, if you remember, we had an aura hash. So I have the value of the aura hash. And for the phone fax, it was the regex. And the regex is new one. If I go back for, uh, uh, to the original value, if you remember, I have this one from fax, and now I have different, but with a regex. And of course, because it's not deterministic, start date is different, but you will see that with after, after to refresh the PDB2. I want to see, I want to check the conditional masking as well. So in my, uh, in my table order, if I launch it, I see that I have the original data in PDB2. So you can see here the name for MX, Barb, Russ, Raphael. And now I, I have Aiden, Tobji, and Kade. This is a new name, so remember, I, I have uh, used the, 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 the colon username of the mask data table. And here, this is my conditional masking. So you remember card name, uh, MX card name, uh, card number, sorry, start from, start with three, digit three, digit five for MasterCard and digit, digit four for Visa. So my condition is still uh, uh, respected. Now I want to uh, modify the PDB2. So I go back here to my PDB1 to see my new values. And here, go back to my PDB2 to see the original values. I go back here to my console and I just need to schedule new job. But here, I will choose the associated database. In my case, this is PDB2 here. I will use the right account. Uh, in database mode, I, I select the target, is not a production database, and I use the, exactly the same seed, one, two, three, four. This is for the encryption regular expression, and remember, one, two, three, four. I will put that on the, here, on this, I know it's not that. Uh, I will put that on this directory. So I need this one here. And I will call it PDB2 one, two, three, four. Okay. I put the right credential here and I submit it. I can follow the execution here. So this is on the PDB2. Succeeded. So now, as you can see, my masking job is succeeded. If I go back to my server, now I can see the new script for the PDB2 if I want to use it uh, in the future. And if I go back on SQL Developer, so it was the original data. And now if I launch it, I see the new data. And as you can see, I got exactly the same value on, uh, on PDB1 and PDB2 here and here, only for the deterministic environment. So I mean until fun facts. But for start date, it's non-deterministic. You can see the start date is different between P2 
PDB1 and PDB2. If I go back to the order table, order table, I see also here the deterministic part, so the name, but not the card name because it, it was not deterministic algorithm for the card name. But I still keep the, the conditional information. So three, uh, the, the first digit is three for MX, five for MasterCard, and four for Visa. So my condition is still respected. Respected. Okay, so like that, you can see easily how to uh, how to use this algorithm. In uh, uh, in uh, data masking, you have several masking formats. You have deterministic format, as you have seen. You have uh, only one reversible, so this is the encryption, and you have also different algorithm. And if you want. Uh, uh, to, to discover that, please refer to the uh, session two months ago, because this is a basics, uh, basics algorithm. You can, uh, I wanted to share with you the best practices. So as you have seen, I, I use the XML file because it's quite easy, uh, very fast to use it. You can copy and paste them. You can change it very easily. You can duplicate them and you can load or export them very, very easily. So uh, if you want uh, to, uh, to, to gain, to win a lot of time, it's uh, very interesting to use that. You can also play on the performance of uh, the execution of your process. Uh, for example, you can disable video log generation. You can also disable refresh statistics after masking, but you can also play with the parallel degree uh, uh, depending on your on your resources of your uh, of your server, of course you can choose the different mode in database or in export, but you can also play with the uh, uh, temporary table space if you want to isolate the execution in a specific uh, temporary table space. It's very useful if you want to um, uh, to uh, to be more efficient. You can do that. Usually, you can specify uh, an existing table space, or you can create a new table space, temporary, on pre mask script. You can use it uh, on, on, the, on, the, on your execution, and you can drop it very easily on your post mask script. So uh, keep in mind, this is possible to, to use PL SQL or, uh, or DDL and DML on your pre post mask script. Um, also, you, I, I, I will recommend you to use uh, EM CLI verbs. Like that, you can generate scripts. You, uh, script. you can use them in, in the batch, in the shell, or scheduler. It's very easy to do that. Like that, you, you have a lot of uh, verbs to uh, uh, create, uh, to associate uh, targets. Uh, DB on your ADM, you can export, import uh, ADM and verify them. You can also uh, play on the data masking and on the subsetting. You have a lot of verbs on that. You can also use the ADM repository table if you want to follow, for example, the execution or if you want to, uh, to, to know more about your ADM and also if you want to know more on your data subsetting and masking. You can also launch the result. You can generate, you can schedule, you can export, and you can, uh, uh, pr uh, you can pr um, use that on, on batch and shell if you want. In summary, I wanted to be sure that you, uh, you understand all the main components and all the main message of uh, data masking and subsetting. You can accelerate your compliance with this kind of tool because it's very easy to use, easy to deploy, easy to, management, uh, to manage. You don't need to code uh, or adapt your application. This is a robust and proven solution. Uh, we use this, uh, this, um, this tool in a very huge environment, very stressful, 
and, and, uh, and very complex. Um, you don't need to have a lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of skills because it's very easy to use. As you have seen, uh, you have few uh, screens to uh, uh, to know. It's very easy to um, uh, to manipulate. So the learning curve is very low, and like that, you can uh, reduce uh, drastically the duration of your project. So uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I will give you uh, I will give you back the hand, uh, Richard. And if you have any question, uh, uh, I will be there to to answer with pleasure. Thanks, Akeem. That was uh, a great presentation. I've seen it three times today, and I've enjoyed it all three times. So, <laughs> so I always enjoy the the demo part of the presentation. So. Just uh, kind of a summary here, we've got about three minutes for questions and answers. Um, 19C, all platforms, documentation updates, register for open world, join us next month. Next month, tentatively, we're gonna have a partner come on and talk about strong authentication. So talk about integrating the Oracle database with Radius, with Kerberos, uh, EUS, things like that. So let's go ahead and get to our question and answers. Does anybody, have any questions they'd like to put in the chat or unmute themselves and ask here? All right, it doesn't sound like we have any questions, but again, if you have any questions after this presentation, feel free to reach out to me. Oh, we do have one here. So we have a question in the chat. If we have primary key, foreign key relationships, what is a simple way to do masking? Uh, Hakeem, would you like to answer that? Yes, sir. so if we have a PK relation, uh, then what is a simple way to do masking? Um, uh, yes, this is the main, uh, I, I think this is the most important thing in a, in a masking mode, because if you want to be uh, realistic and if you want to, to be sure that uh, everything is consi consistency, you need to, uh, to, avoid, to avoid to modify uh, PK, the uh, primary key, because uh, this is, of course, the relationship of your database. So in this case, uh, if you modify it, you lose all the consistency of your of your masking. So uh, please modify all the columns, but not the primary because if you do that, the 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 consistency of your database and your application will be destroyed. Great question. Okay, so we are at the top of the hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop sharing and stop recording. So thanks to everybody for joining. Thanks to Hakeem for his presentation. And um, if you missed it or if you'd like to pass it along, in a few days we'll have this available on asktom.oracle.com. So thanks very much, have a great day. And now we're gonna go ahead and open it up to any questions anyone has. If you wanna type them in the chat, go ahead and type them in the chat. If you wanna unmute yourself, go ahead and unmute yourself and you can ask any questions that you have. Not everybody at once, all right? <laughs> Hi, Richard, this is Jason Willis. Can you hear us now? Yes, sir. Hey, sorry about that. We were fighting with Zoom for a second. You're good. Uh, good, I wanna hand the mic over to Karen. She's actually with Oracle as one of our consultants. Uh, okay. So I was Hi. So I was wondering if there's a way for us to play with this. Is there a playground somewhere? 
So for the moment, uh, we haven't got, but uh, you, you can, uh, uh, we are working on the, on the sandbox and on OCI. If you have, uh, if you have an OCI, we can share uh, a specific uh, environment for that. Or, or if you have Enterprise Manager installed in your environment and you have a test database, you can uh -huh. play with data masking and subsetting against one of your own non-production dev test instances if you want to get started with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so and the documentation is pretty good. There's some good videos out there on like the Oracle Learning Library that talks about masking. Um, you know, and then the documentation is pretty good. And if not, shoot us an email. Um, reach out to us online. We're going to do another one of these next month, so you're welcome to ask any question you want next month, too. But uh, since you're Oracle, reach out to me internally, and uh, Hakeem and I, and uh, we can see what, what we can do to help you out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Jim, you have a question, sir? Um, yeah, when do you, at the beginning, are you showing uh, different ways of uh, g getting it to your test environment when is a threshold of when do you want to do the uh go from one way of doing it to a different way uh so like a threshold of how large the database is or yeah it's probably my, yeah about the uh volume level something like that okay Hakeem, do you have any thoughts on when you should maybe move from one form of masking to another or kind of some of the techniques you described Oh, yes, yes, we have, and we can share that. Uh, uh, it's quite uh, tricky to, to talk about that here, but we, we can share if you send us an email. We can do that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jim, go ahead and uh, send me an email. I know you've worked with Russ a lot. Oh, uh, a lot. Russ is on uh, like a safari for a little bit here, so I'm filling in. So <laughs> He's jaunting around the world. But I would say it probably mostly depends on your your how quickly you want your data to return, right? Maybe what your SLAs are. So, but yeah, let's talk about that offline. That'd be great here. So, we've got about a minute left. Um, I think that's it. I don't see anyone else unmuting, and I don't see any other questions in the chat here. So, I appreciate everybody taking some time to join us here for this Ask Tom session, and uh, please. Let your friends, neighbors, enemies, whoever you need about, let them know about this database security office hours so they can join us. And uh, we hope to see you next month on our topic on strong authentication. Hey, Rich, I had one yeah. other question on Audit Vault. Okay. When you do the archive process and you're in a high availability uh, configuration, it seems to work fine on the primary that the data files are dropped, the data is moved off, but the secondary doesn't seem like the data disappears. Okay. So AutoVault and Data Firewall doesn't work properly in the standby when archiving. Yeah, when you're doing that archive process that yeah, takes process. for the long-term holding of data. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, let me reach out to Angeline, our product manager on AVDF, and ask her about that. And I'll look at any open. Do you have an open SR on this, Jim? Yeah, there's one open this morning. Okay. All right. So can you shoot me an email with that SR number, and I'll have Angeline take a look at it and see what we can do? Okay. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.